Uh, I get the question all the time, what yoga do I do? And I want to talk about that really briefly. So I do, I'm an old guy and I believe in modifying in order to get something that's healthy for you. So I do Ashtanga. Uh, you can go to tummy.com. I don't have a, uh, I don't have a, an ex all my, my sequence on here yet. But if you go to tummy.com, T-U-M-M-E-E.com, you can kind of make your own sequence up. But, but in, I started out doing Ashtanga. So the best place to learn about Ashtanga is here. Uh, AshtangaYoga.info. Mostly, this is in German, unfortunately. Um, I mostly agree with this sequence um, that's here. And you can go download it. Uh, if I can find it here, Ashtanga Yoga. And traditional practice, practice series, inspiration for yoga. Uh, cheat sheets so you can get the PDFs for this. Um, I really like Ron Steiner because he is a physical therapist as well as a, an Ashtanga yogi, and so he, you know, he's he's done all of it. So I'm just gonna summarize really quick. So I do because I try. I want to finish in an hour, and I'm and I'm gonna tell you some things, and there's gonna be some yoga people that are gonna come unglued. Okay, so let me tell you that you have permission to make yoga into what your body needs. And, and there are a lot of people that disagree with it, particularly in the Ashtanga tradition. And they, they love to tell people what to do. They get really dogmatic about it, a lot like religion. Um, I think that's silly. So if you want to see a great video about that, about why it's silly to get all crazy about a tradition, go to YouTube and search for a woman named Maddie Azrati. This, no, Maddie Azrati. And uh, see if we can find her. Uh, that is not her. Madi Azrati Ashtanga. I don't know if Ezra, uh -oh, Ezrati Yoga. Madi Azrati Yoga. Uh, and you go listen to her talk. This is it. This is a video. Madi Azrati on Ashtanga Yoga. She's talking about it. She's my favorite Ashtangi. Uh, she's not with us anymore, but she talks really a lot about, about which one to do and how, you know, don't get so caught up in all of that. So, but so to summarize what I do, I do sun A's, sun A's to build heat in the body, but I don't, I don't do sun A's more than I need because I, I just need to build up the heat and get my body warm so I can do the rest of yoga. That's the purpose of sun A's for me. Um, my wife does, sometimes she'll do 25 or 50 sun A's as kind of a workout. And that's fine. If you can't do anything with just sun A's and then do the finishing sequence and jump to the to the end, um, you've done yoga for the day, right? And um, a lot of people will struggle with sun A's, especially if you're larger, which I was. Uh, I lost a lot of weight. Uh, I did a lot of cycling to lose weight. I just started to do yoga and then I gave it up because I was I wanted to do you know the yoga that I had been doing every day and I couldn't because it was too heavy. And I mean, it was like destroying my, my, my wrists and a bunch of things because I, again, I was just really, really heavy. So doing just sun A's to lower your weight or to, and to get, you know, the benefit from that, that might be enough. Um, you know, but, but put together your own sequence. Uh, the only thing you really need to know is make sure you have a counter pose for every single pose you do. So like if you do a fold over, make sure you counter with something that folds your back. Um, and and you know inter intermix them if you another thing you can do is you can intermix poses that make you breathe really heavy with poses that are relaxing and um that's like some of the the main guidance there uh, other than that because i've been influenced by the ashtanga tradition uh i've been doing these poses for years since 2010 uh i've been doing these poses um and, you know, it comes and goes. My flexibility comes and goes over time when I don't do it. Uh, but I really like the nature of Ashtanga because it's, it's very do this thing and then do this thing and don't focus on the form. Don't hurt yourself, but, but work more on focusing your mind and doing it kind of like Tai Chi, but that makes you breathe heavier, right? Because it's more, it's better workout. That's my take on it. That's why I like it. It is a workout. It does, it does really tire me. Uh, so I'm so much so I had to give up cycling at the end of the day because it's just too, after, after 60 minutes for me, I'm 57 and after 60 minutes of doing Ashtanga yoga with the jump throughs, which are basically a push up, um, then a burpee push up, then I, you know, I don't have anything left. So, um, 
at least for now, I've had to give up cycling at the end of the day. Maybe, you know, maybe my fitness will continue to improve and I can eventually do some cycling at the end of the day. This, 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 this I've done cycling on the, on the weekend, uh, scheduled it for the weekend beginning of November. Beginning of November, I'll start doing outdoor cycling again. Um, but for now, I need to finish moving and I need that energy. So, so the fundamental position, so you have Sun A, uh, and I'm not going to demonstrate it. I'm just talking about it. If you actually want to see me doing yoga, the only way to do that is to come on Twitch because I play music that's copyrighted in DJ mode, which is totally valid and legal. And um, so, it, you know, those the videos go away. So you have to come join me on Twitch for that in the morning at 9 a.m. Um, but if you want to do that, then you can come see me do these sequences and maybe kind of learn a little bit about them while you're watching. I'm not going to act out every, every single one of those poses. Um, then I do the fundamental positions, uh, which are, uh, let's see if I can zoom in on this a little bit. Um, let's go up to hundred percent, at least 110%. Um, I wish it would go bigger. I wish it would go way bigger. Oh, if I did this, what does this do? I'm gonna probably have to just download it. So anyway, you do you hold over. So the the S stands for Sava CDE. That's because you're standing up up straight. This tells you just to just to break this down for you. So this these are all the Sanskrit names. Uh, one of the reasons I showed you this other site is because it does have the English and the Sanskrit names. So you can decide if you want to do that or not. Uh, I don't actually don't know the the uh, English names for some of them. This is Padangustasana, Padastasana. So this one, this one is to you know to stretch your back out and hamstrings. Don't overdo it. Obviously, it tells you where to look. That's what the nose is about. It tells you your inhale, out, exhale. Almost every one of these poses ends with five breaths, uh, regular breaths, not not uh, not. Uh, uh, Ujjayi. A lot of people confuse that. A lot of people do Ujjayi breathing. They think that's what yoga is. It's not. Yoga does involve yoga. Uh, ujjayi breathing is a part of pratyahana, uh, pratyahara. Sorry, that is you know breathing exercises, which are part of yoga. But the but the the implication that that that, that Ujjayi breathing is what's happening in, in Ashtanga is totally wrong. People say that all the time. Uh, Ujjayi is deep, long breaths and that kind of sound like Darth Vader while you're doing them. And even though the breathing between these poses is deep and, you know, sometimes it's guttural and everything, you, it's usually faster than a common Ujjayi breathing. And if you, if you go into this thinking, I'm going to do all these really hard work and I'm not, I've got to breathe like Ujjayi, really long, slow breaths, that's wrong because you, you need to breathe more frequently than that. By the way, if you do start needing to breathe like more than the breathing calls for in Ashtanga, um, it usually means you're pushing too hard and you need to take a break. And that's actually a good thing physically for you too because that'll put you back in zone two as opposed to pushing in, you know, up into tempo and, and other, you know, higher rates uh, for working out. Now, you can do, and I have done, you can do Ashtanga in kind of fast mode and make it sort of this, you know, really intense workout, as long as you don't, you know, overly stretch or break anything. And I've done that too, and there's nothing wrong with that. So sometimes I just feel like getting a really good workout, so I will push the pace on it. Uh, I'll still breathe, but I'll just make the breathing much faster. Sometimes I feel like, like when I'm really hurting, sometimes I'll feel like holding a pose for 20 seconds instead of five breaths, which is the minimum you need to actually have a stretch effect effectively take hold on, on, in your muscles. This is, we had to learn that for training. So Ashtanga has you only doing the poses for five breaths, and that alone is not going to, it will over time make small changes to your body, but if you like want to open your hamstrings or you're be able to do, you know, full lotus or something, you, you that's not going to be enough. You're, you're going to have to have some of those poses be extended for a certain amount of time. I'm going to show you one thing that I do way more than about two minutes every time I do this because of, in my back, I roll out my back because I'm a, a coder and a cyclist. And we'll talk about that. So this is, there's a triangle pose. Um, you can modify all these. Uh, my favorite book to get on this is David Swenson's book. Uh, this is, if I was going to recommend you buy anything, uh, this is the one I would recommend you get. Um, AshtangaYoga.net. He does some videos for free. Uh, the book I have, the tattered book I have on the ground over here, 
where is it? Right there. That is my Ashtanga Yoga Manual. And the reason I think it's the most important book for any beginner to get is because it actually has all the modifications in it. And you can flip the pages and it tells you in excruciating detail what to do. Um, if you're going to go with the Ashtanga tradition, I recommend that. Because that, that will go into actually what you do for every pose. Uh, there's another couple books out there, but that's the one that, that I like the most. Um, and then when we go back to... Where do you go? So... Uh, if we go back to this, where was I? Come on, Rob. Uh, good old Matty. So, so you know, you, you do the bending over. Um, this is the step down. Now, a lot of these, I, I modify them all because I can't. This this particular sequence right here where you're touching the ground, uh, if you don't have the flexibility to touch the ground, it's a totally different exercise because it actually activates your hamstrings because it uses them. And... It's a different exercise completely. Hey, Bone. So just so you know, um, some of the modifications are going to work your body out in different ways. Or actually, some of them will actually tighten the muscles you're, you're working to stretch or you're to, to flex it, to open up. And if you do this particular pose uh, and you can't touch the ground, you are doing a totally different thing. But I'm okay with that. So um, so here it goes. There's the 33 right there. Uh, and then this is a vinyasa. So basically, you're samasiddhi he. You bend over, you look up, you jump back, or put your foot back, and then you you fold your toes under. You roll up, and you go down. You go, you do another burp. You can hold it right there, and you know flexible, uh, you know, like straighten the back as much as you can. Go up and then go back down, and then and then you can jump through uh, your feet. So that's how you go all the way up, right? Uh, if you want to go back up to standing, but you can also do this sequence and you go to right here and then you uh, you either jump your feet through your arms back to sitting or staff pose and then you start the next one. So that's that's what they call a vinyasa, which means flow uh, between the different poses. So again, this video is designed to be a summary. You can stop it in, in any time you want. Uh, people ask questions about why I do this type of yoga. So the other main sequence to know is the finishing sequence. This is at the very end. Um, and then there's there's kind of a sandwich in the middle, and that's primary, and we'll talk about that. Uh, it really opens the heart and so forth. It does. Um, so uh, doing doing a vinyasa like that, you, as you can tell, tell when you're doing up dog, it, it does. It opens up your heart. It flexes, you know, it, it opens your back and your muscles. It's also an inversion, so it gets blood flow to your brain, and, you know, and it kind of... So, so just doing, that's what I said, just doing sun A's, that, the vinyasa right there is a sun A, right? It's a sun A, and you basically do a sun A between all the poses. Whether you land in standing or sitting, same thing, right? It's a sun A, which is why if you're just doing sun A's, uh, you get a good workout and it'd be really great. Um, so this here is, this is the finishing sequence, and I need to talk about this. Um, first of all, uh, Ron Steiner has added more to the finishing sequence than, than is actually in the finishing sequence. He's made some adaptations to Ashtanga. Tends, people tend to do that. Um, the finishing sequence actually starts uh, with uh, a backbend. And he doesn't have backbend in his. Um, and, you know, he's got all of this other stuff here. So, again, this is just a video commenting on what I've done in my yoga. Uh I do this, I, I do, I, I've just recently, I've eliminated uh, these poses because they're horrible, horrible, horrible on my neck and uh, I can't risk it. I have a really bad neck. My neck has gotten messed up over because of years of, of, of athletics and, and different things and, and computer work and all kinds of reasons. I have a, a very sharp uh spine and when it hits it hits my shoulder and, and a big part of yoga is understanding your body and then adapting yoga for your body uh this is where having an actual certified yoga person or um you know a, a physical therapist or something get involved with you, what you're going to do is to help you uh, adjust your body you really need to be be careful with, particularly with back things um and you know people get injured in yoga all the time because they think they are supposed to do the exact pose so my I have a very sharp inward curve on my, you know, everybody's got the curve in their neck like this, but mine is really sharp. And, and I'm actually looking to do some head traction, um, 
in order to to work on that. I I can't recommend it to anybody. I would make sure you get, you know, don't I don't know about a chiropractor, but you know, licensed physical therapist. If you're going to start to do that kind of thing, um, but the yoga I've been doing has been making me really aware of that part. And when you get up my age, you know, you got to be aware of all that stuff. So, um, head traction is they they have a thing that you can put on your head, and you you basically just you know put your head in a vice or in <laughs> in a, a, a strap and then you let the weight of your body pull down on your neck and straighten your neck and open up the columns between your uh, uh, between your neck to kind of straighten your neck out uh, obviously <laughs> super dangerous you don't want everybody to do it I'm not recommending you do it but I'm telling you mostly here the reason I don't do these poses anymore uh, some of you've been watching me do yoga you've seen me do them uh, everything that is covered by these poses, I believe, is covered elsewhere better. Uh, and Iyengar would agree, right? So um, this is an inversion, which you can do with handstand, which I do, which is this is very safe. This is actually one of the most safest inversions you can ever do uh, if you learn how to do it. And we'll talk about that in a second. So this, all of this stuff is designed, I guess, to open up your, you see how sharply um, the turn is? on the head though that's the real dangerous part and yeah it's an inversion and yes it's it squishes your organs and gets it all set up uh and it's got you know it's got a lotus in there and i can actually do lotus here better when i'm inverted than i can when i'm sitting down but uh as far as i'm concerned the only purpose for this uh, physically is to get the inversion all the reasons for getting an inversion and to open up your hamstrings um and both of those things can be done, both of those things can easily be done more safely with other poses. In fact, these, any of these poses like this are not included in any yoga tradition whatsoever uh, outside of Ashtanga. So uh, I, don't, I don't do them, I've eliminated them, and that saved me a lot of time, actually. Um, however, I do make sure to do this. So this is a Shirshasana. This is called shoulder stand, and I want to be really careful with this. I've the reason I'm making this video is because people watch me and they see me do headstand and they call it a handstand or headstand. It's not. The head is only barely touching the mat on this pose. There is another variation on this uh, in, in it's another version of yoga where they actually do headstands. There's people who literally stand only on their head in yoga. Super dangerous, super stupid. I would never do it. I can't recommend it to anybody. Um, and inversion is super important for your body. You need to get inverted. You need to get that blood flowing the other direction. It's actually really it makes you really high afterwards. But they have you like laying in a crouched position after this for, you know, five, 10, 15 breaths or something. And then and then you're ready to, you know, to come up for air. Uh, you know, if, if you do inversions, and by the way, downward dogs are also inversions that are not as intense, so you don't end up with an aneurysm. If you're going to get an aneurysm, it's going to happen while you're doing an inversion like this. So don't, don't be stupid, don't overdo it, listen to your body. But if you can learn how to do a proper shoulder stand, I think it's one of the best poses you can do um, because it, it does, it literally inverts you, your, your body is absolutely straight. All of the uh, balancing, all of the muscular uh, activation for the balancing is happening in your upper shoulder girdle. There is no head balancing happening at all. There occasionally, I mean, your head is touching the ground, uh, yeah, you could, and but occasionally your head will touch the ground when you're doing it. But if it does touch the ground, it should only be for a slight second while you re regain your balance across your shoulder, across your hands. And your hands are, you know, your hand, your here, the pressure points in the mat are right here and across your shoulders right here. I mean, across your um, across your forearms, right? And they call it forearm stand. But I just I want to be really. That's one of the ones the poses I really want to talk about because people see me doing that all the time and. I am so terrified that someone's just going to try it and not know what they're doing and really hurt themselves. Um, uh, you know, it's one of the reasons I almost considered not streaming yoga. Um, and then, and then you, co you come down. Uh, I do spread leg uh, here. You can also do this. This is really, really, really good on your back. Uh, it's really, it's a lot of strain on your back. However, this is like a lot of strain on your lower back. And so, if you if you don't want to risk it, don't do it. If your lower back's not strong enough yet, don't do it. Um, and then you do this and you can, you can come into, I, I actually have put some poses in here, um, in between this pose and this pose where he's doing bound, this is bound Lotus. I, I do love these final poses right here. 
So I've eliminated Shavasana, I've, I've eliminated Shavasana, which is you lay down for 20 minutes. I don't do it anymore. I don't, I, I see the value of it, but I don't do it. I would rather, the whole point of asana is to get ready for meditation. So I actually rather, that's your last pose, by the way, Shavasana. Uh, rather than do Shavasana, I actually sit, uh, I'll do some prani, Pratyahara, I'll do some breathing, I'll do some Nali, which is a special type of breathing uh, that helps shrink your inner organs. And um, and then I'll do uh, uh, another, I forget the name of it, but it's uh, it's not... I don't have the flexibility to do have to a pole lotus. Uh, eventually, I would. I would stay in a pole lotus, but right now I just sit with my sit very grounded, and I do meditation. I do meditation. I do dhana and dharana, which are focused meditations. I'll do. I'll I'll listen to music and just focus on the lyrics. I'll I'll do. What is it the what's the candle gazing called? I'll just stare at a light for five or ten minutes, rather than just lay down for twenty minutes. Um, there's nothing wrong with laying down. Some of the best things, sometimes I fall asleep and it's a nice 20 minute nap if you want to do that, but I don't, uh, I'll usually do meditation right here instead. Um, because I don't have that much time. If I ever did, uh, uh, an Ashtanga practice, all the stuff I've cut out of it, it would still take me almost 90 minutes to do the whole thing. And so I don't do that. But the other thing about the finishing sequence that I have done, uh, is to build, and this comes uh, from a book about, uh, uh, building, uh, building your body to be able to do, uh, Baddha Konasana, which is uh, bound, half lo- uh, full lotus. And most Americans, most Westerners are not able to do full lotus. So what I've done here is I've injected in between here. Here I do I, I do a side stretch because there's almost no side stretches in yoga, particularly in Ashtanga. There's nothing that works the side body. There's nothing that stretches the side body. There is in, in Batiste yoga, but there's not in, in Ashtanga. Um, and other than, you know, the, the reaching out stuff from the early uh, sequence, but so I usually will do that and that's, that's what I do to pull out of it. Then I'll, I'll do hero pose, which they don't show here. I don't know why they're not showing hero here. That's actually a part of the pose where you stand up and you're like, got your hands there and you just let that stretch out the front of your leg. Uh, Americans have sit, we've been, we've been, Westerners have been sitting in chairs since the, since they were kids. If they had been sitting on the ground since they were kids, they'd easily be able to do it. So the main reason between uh, the Eastern uh, civilizations and cultures that, and the Western cultures, uh, most Westerners, there's no way they'll ever be able to do a full lotus. Most Easterners can do full lotus and could since they were eight years old. Because you, we've been sitting like I am. The way that I'm sitting, our, our hamstrings and our hips and everything are are being contracted on purpose the way we sit um if, if you want to actually open your body up i see people in gamer chairs all the time and it just makes me wince in pain i'm like how can you sit in that um i suggest if you get a chair like mine i like mine this is a very cheap chair if you get a chair like mine mine is 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 you know it's got ventilation which is really important if you spend 12 hours in a chair you know i did a 12 hour stream the other day and the second thing is, is it's comfortable enough that I can actually sit in half lotus on here. And that this is so much better for your body than sitting in a chair the regular way. Uh, in fact, I could seriously consider in this new office of mine, putting all of this stuff on the ground and actually streaming from the ground, streaming in, in, ha- you know, in lotus the whole time. Uh, when I first started my tech career, uh, when I well after the divorce, I when I was making my my house up, I I took my laptop around with me everywhere, and I would I would do different yoga poses all over. And since I started streaming, I was super happy to stream from the laptop because I technically I could take my laptop and I could sit in in cobra pose, which is you know on your tummy with you know reverse arching your back instead of hunching over your keyboard, and you know you could vary. I've even done legs up the wall, which is you know stand next to sit next to the wall, so. Be very conscious of your of your ergonomics, but the most important thing is is developing the back strength and the back flexibility. And we're going to talk about this later a little bit. That you you you've got to counter the hunching. If you don't counter the hunching, you will end. You've seen old people with hunches by the time they hit sixty, right? You've seen what happens, and, 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 and they they lose they lose height. They get these big hunchbacks on going on. And the only way to combat that is to learn how to sit properly, just to straight up maintain your back strength and your, your butt strength, build a booty, my friend used to say. And, and, you know, and to sit like with your, with your, 
you know, your, your hips and everything grounded. And that way that'll straighten your back up a little bit. And you'll, you'll, you'll be now it's hard to do this. Actually, it's hard. You can't, it's not relaxing to sit like, I mean, it does, it is, but, but it, it's firing different muscles. It's firing core muscles down here all the time. You know, people that sit on bouncy balls and stuff, that's, that's well and good, but you're still sitting in a seated pose. Um, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're still sitting in a seated pose. And the problem with a seated pose is it's, it's totally locking your hamstrings up completely. So um, anyway, so, so what I've ins inserted into here is specific, uh, I, I, the book about, you know, Full Lotus that I read, it, it shows you all the poses to prepare to be able to sit this way uh, in a way that's, you know, healthy. And uh, and those poses are pigeon, and you'll see me do that. It's what you, you're doing downward dog, and then you kick your leg up, and you run it through, and then you kind of like you arch up, and then you like lay down on sort of your leg while it's there. And you can feel the stretch across the back of your ass, and and that, and then I do, and then I do, after I do that, I do uh, uh, timber log pose, which is where you have your legs out in front of you, and you kind of put one foot over the knee here i'll show you so timber log is like this you'd have like here i'll just do one so timber log like this so you have one leg like this right one leg like this and then this leg on top okay you see how unflexible i am See this right here? And that, and this, this is gonna open up this part of your leg. And you can just rest like this. And then slowly, no, don't push it. It'll go down, it'll go down, it'll go down, right? And just do it on the other side. I think, I think that's one of the most important poses that we tech people could ever do. Because that, that uh, releases your hips, it opens up your hips a lot. And uh, it prepares you to be able to do half lotus and polos and stuff like that. Um, pigeon does the same thing. Uh, so, but I I have put those poses here there to open up my hips before I do Bhadakanasana, which is full lotus, you know, with stuff behind your head. Now you can do that pose and just put timber pose, timber log pose there, log pose instead, and then you know the bending over. And then there's then I do this pose right here. This is this is full lotus, and then this is the one where you elevate yourself and you 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 hold yourself up, which is really fun. It's hard work though. This is this is really really exhausting, and then you go down. So that's how I've modified the finishing sequence. There there is uh, um, some other stuff here that hasn't been shown. So um, so let's go back to the primary series. Um, uh, he has a notice, and I'm, I'm going to end the video here. This will be enough for today. Um, okay, so, whoops. Uh-oh, where'd it go? So, he's he's done, he, he has a different take on this, and at first I thought it was really smart, and now I realize how bad it is, particularly for old people. Um, so... This pose here, so these these are called the balance poses, right? So these these come at the beginning, after you finish, you know, the the, the starting poses. You do these. These um, this is these are sometimes called the standing poses, right? Because these all happen before before you go to the ground. And I don't know why he combined these. These are most people who when they divide up Ashtanga, they divide it up into the standing poses. And then they divide it into the seated poses. And he's mixed them together. So these these are the balance poses. And I, I just use a I just use a, a, a towel here. But as you can see, these are extremely hard to do. These are very hard. They, you have to have the flexibility and you have to have balance. And you these take a tremendous amount of leg strength. I don't I can't I can't tell you how much leg strength these but the leg strength that they require is the most important leg strength you can ever have. It's balance strength. And one of the things I noticed is that, like, I mean, my skating and paddleboarding and everything when I was doing yoga just got so good because my balance got so good. And then over time, you lose balance. It's one of the main things you lose, especially as you age. 
And the balance poses, uh, I struggle. I struggle with them. I have to touch the wall sometimes. You know, I have to use that. There's all things that I have to do to mod. But I got to tell you, since I've been doing this regularly for like two and a half, three weeks now, when I walk, everything I do is just more based, more grounded, more rooted. And I can feel that the muscles in my calves and feet uh, and the nerves have, have tuned in to, to being better balanced. When I, when I, I feel like sort of like a, what I imagine a ballerina, a ballet dancer would feel like when they're rocking. Uh, I'm using pocket three. Um, so, so when we're walking, that's, that's this, when you're aging, these, these poses, modifying these poses and making sure you keep the, his, Ron Steiner's argument for getting rid of these is you don't have the flexibility to do this pose. And you do this exact sequence and the finishing sequence on the ground. And, and I, uh, do that as well. I do that as well. But, but I think that doing the balance pose is so critical. Um, we're making a video by the way, Mr. M. So, so then we do, uh, and then th th I don't do this one. I just hold my foot and do sort of a variation on tree. And then of course we do, we do this one and we do, you know, down, these are, these are the warrior poses. We do that. I don't do this fancy thing that he does. It's cool, but no. Um, and then we do the, the seated poses, all of them. And we go up and you understand. This is, again, these are all really great for cyclists too, because they stretch your hamstrings. Um, and then Maria Chasana, I do the Maria Chasana, even though they're considered advanced because they, they ring out your organs from all the bad blood. They really do. Um, if you're going to have gas, this is when it's going to happen <laughs> because you're that or where the up dog or the up poses. And then we do Navasana. So half primary ends at Navasana. Uh, and you do that before that's with the ab workout. Okay. So the other modification, I don't do anything. I don't do anything in primary past Navasana. Uh, these are, they're kind of silly. Sometimes I'll throw uh, a pigeon and whatever this is called because it's fun, but I, I don't really don't do any of these. Uh, yoga Chikitsa. I mean, they're, they're kind of silly. All these poses are really kind of silly, honestly. Um, they're just variations on the other one and lots of yoga studios will call half primary and they'll just eliminate all of these silly ones. But I do do this one. I do that one. I do this one. Uh, but I don't do it um, right away. So so let me tell you the variation that I've done. This Why the hell would you do that? That is so such a bad idea. It is such a bad idea. So what I do is I skip. I skip from Navasana, which is obviously great. Sometimes I, I used to do 30 sit-ups after that. 30, uh, be careful you don't do bad sit-ups and they hurt you. Do, you know, cycle sit-ups. I would go from this Navasana and I'll go all the way to uh, backbend. And I'll jump past all this stuff and I'll go straight to backbend. But, but in the middle of it, and this is the part I want to really emphasize. So... Before I do backbend, I do almost 10 minutes of rolling out my back with one of these. And you have to be super careful and do it very slowly and only do it in your in your upper back. Don't do it in the lower back because obviously you don't need it there. And I will, I will rotate it. You're going to have to come watch me do it. I'm not going to do it today. I don't have time. So I will, I will slide it back a little bit more and a little bit more at pretty much every one of my lumbar vertebrae and, you know, the... And then I will uh, vary, vary the pressure on my back, depending. And, and God, my back pops like crazy when I do this. Um, and so, and what it does is it opens up your back. And so you can actually vary. We can put your arms at your sides. You can put your arms here. You can put your arms way above your head. And you can vary the arch that happens so, you know, that you're getting that sort of, you know, that reverse arch. And and, and I do that for about 10 minutes every day. And I got to tell you, it is one of the, I've, I haven't never done that before in my practice. And it has totally, totally changed my back because, you know, you, you got to be really careful. You got to, because, you know, when you do it for too long, um, you can eventually end up, you know, overly stressing your back. I mean, you got to be very careful when you come out of it because you put yourself in a very vulnerable position by stretching your back in the reverse way. Uh, so, in, so intensely, but I really love it. I, I, it's, that's considered restorative yoga. 
Um, and there are variations on that where people will just roll up a towel and put it across their back of their shoulders and just lay there. Um, it's not chakra sauna though. Um, <clears throat> and, um, and this is not a pose. This, this, this is a, this is a PT is a physical therapy thing. And, and so again, I'll start and I'll just rotate it through the upper back and then I'll go through the other way and I'll do that for about 10 minutes. And then, and then I'll just lay on my back. And it, one of the most amazing feelings you'll ever have is just laying on your back after you've done that because your back is totally solid on the floor. There's no little spaces that are arched up or anything. And then uh, to do a reverse pose, I'll do, uh, after I do that, while I'm laying on my back, I will do this, this one right here, some variation of this, very, very slowly, uh, just to give a counter pose uh, to the very, very intense stretch that comes from uh, rolling your upper back out. And then I'll do uh, my Urdhva, which means upside down, uh, Dhanurasana, which is bow pose. So um, this this pose right here, uh, it this is a really important pose. It's actually super dangerous if you don't know what you're doing or you don't have the strength to do this. Um Match, back, yeah, back, good mattress too. Um, but this uh, right here, if you can get to the point where you can, you, David Swenson's got all the variations of it, but if you can get to the point where you can do it with this pose, I can't tell you how revolutionary doing backbends has been for me. It has, it has given me so much more strength in my back. And if you are a cyclist, or if you are a computer person, the thing that makes you hunch over is that your back muscles get weak, particularly your lower back muscles. And so those muscles can't keep you, you know, get with good posture. And those muscles get soft and they they can't do it in particularly. And so by doing this, this your your shoulders is a good shoulder builder. Uh, you can do this upside down. You can do this pose upside down. You can grab, if, if you want to, you can do this pose upside down. I'm sorry, on your stomach. You can do it on your stomach and you can grab your feet and then just arch your back. Um, that is a good pose. Uh, that's a good variation on this, but I really, really like this particular pose because it's it's it really works the shoulders. This really works your upper shoulder muscles because you have to hold yourself up. The crab pose doesn't do that. Um, and... It, it works your quads uh, and it, it builds your the strength in your back. And so I I was not able to do this last time I tried because I, I was too heavy. I couldn't support myself and I, I was going to break my ankles. If you if you don't have the strength to support yourself, you end up coming down on your head and break your neck. Don't do that. It's bad. So, you know, but I do that. You're supposed to do three of them, three to five with a laying down in between. Uh and, and then, of course, after you do that, they have a, a forward fold. I don't do that because I don't want to do a full chakra sauna in between. So what I do is I come down. After this, I'm usually really exhausted. And so I'll lay down and I'll do the pose where you gra I just grab my knees and bring them close and I'll roll out my back. I'll roll on my back like a little kid, like a baby, like they do. And, and then I will do, uh, I'll go right after that, I'll, I'll jump right into the um, uh, into the the other poses so she, he's doing a whole transition and, and then after that then i'll do these okay so after that i know i've moved it but see these poses are before this pose but i don't do that i still do these poses but i have moved them i've moved them so i do this pose and then i come i rest from it because it's exhausting and then i do a two-legged up thing kind of like this one because you need a counter pose for your back while I'm, and I'm already on my back. I don't want to do a full chakra sauna just to be able to fold over. That seems silly to me. So while I'm on my back, then I do this. Then I do these. And these are the same thing as the balance sequence. They're just on the floor, on the ground. And it's very relaxing, super duper relaxing. It feels really great. Um, and again, it's, it's, and then, and then after that's done, uh, then, uh, after, after that's done, I will go and do um, headstand, which is not in this list. And after I do headstand, I already told you the sequence after that. So, I'm uh, sorry, forearm stand. I'll do forearm stand after that. Um, uh, you know, and I, I don't chakra sauna because I can't do a true chakra sauna, which is also, if you do it wrong, it's really bad on your head and your neck. 
A chakra sauna is basically a backward somersault where your hands are right here. So that when you go, but if you do it right, if you do a chakra sauna, most people don't, but if you do a, back, a, a backward somersault, a backward, you know, somersault, um, most people will like tilt their head and go around. And I sometimes do that, but that's like a, a true chakra sauna. It's like straight back and it, you can, you can, it catches your head. And at that moment where it catches your head, you're supposed to push your hands up so that you can go straight up. It's pretty tricky. It's not what people think. And I don't, I don't bother with it. Anything that's going to mess with my neck, I don't mess with it because my neck is a vulnerability that I have. And I don't, I don't, I don't want to pop my neck. I felt, I just don't, I don't want to mess with it. Uh, it could be catastrophic if I pinch a nerve up there. So, um, so I don't, I don't do anything. There it is. See, there's a chakra sauna. See him, see how, how bent over his head is. This is why I don't do chakra sauna. Um, and there's really no need to do it. Honestly, it looks cool. That's it. That's really the only reason. Um, and so, yeah, so that's, that's my sequence. That's, uh, there's a lot of questions about that. Uh, this video is actually intended mostly for people and I will, um, probably make a link to this video. This is, uh, this video is actually intended mostly for people who've been watching me do yoga and have been asking questions like, why are you doing that sequence? What is going on with that sequence? Um, uh, as I, as I, the, the summation of it is, is that I've altered a stronger half primary, uh, to include, uh, a little bit more of primary that include the, the, you know, the laying down balance poses. Uh, and I've added, I've taken away Shavasana and added about 10 to 20 minutes of back rolling, which I consider similar to Shavasana, even though it's not at the end. And I, and I do that right before I do my back bend. Uh, I don't do any of the folded neck stuff because I have a weak, I have a problem with my neck and I don't want to mess with it. And that's it. So hopefully if you want to see that in practice, please come join me. Um, if you want to give yoga a try, you can just do the sun A's with me. Um, some of you may have already noticed I have had a, a couple of people comment off, char off, off the thing that, um, that like, oh my God, who are you? And if you look back at my other videos, uh, a lot of people only know me from those videos and they don't know me before, before I started making, uh, you know, Twitch videos in 2000, whatever, 19 or something. Uh, you know, back in my yoga days, I, you know, I had, I had more of the body that I'm getting back right now and, and it will transform you. I promise you, I promise you, yoga, yoga will transform you. And I, one of the things I really like about yoga is that unlike CrossFit or other things, which I've done, that's actually how I found out about yoga was P90X. Uh, Tony Horton, who created P90X, the entire CrossFit mo movement is something, he's like 65 now, and he's like a massive yogi. So he's really, really important in the yoga community uh, for the Western world. And he swears by it, calls it the fountain of youth. Um, and one of the reasons that I like it is because yoga builds the body that I actually want, which is healthy, can last a long time, and actually is is bulkier in places that actually provide contour so for example um your 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 shoulders and your upper chest uh will get built you'll get big triceps you'll get you know, your biceps don't get really huge um and you don't usually get a huge back so you get a you get a you get a strong back you get a strong back and a strong lower back and but you don't you don't have that like really wide look that that body the gym people get and, um, but I think the thing I, I, my wife, boy, when my wife does yoga, she's just got, she, she, she wears like, you know, shirtless and tank tops and you should see the development that she has in her, in her shoulders and her upper chest. It's just so gorgeous. And, you know, she's got those little stripe illustrations in it and stuff. And if you look at, if you, if you look at people before and after they, you can almost spot a yogi. Uh, it is, it's totally good for old age and bedroom time. Yeah. We forgot to talk about that. Yeah. So a lot of those poses we didn't talk about. So I, one of them, some, when I'm doing some of those fuller forward folds, I'm like, I'm like tightening my mula bandha. Uh, you're going to have to read about that. I'm not going to tell you about it. It's basically Kegel exercises for men. It's actually a part of yoga. And that's one of the reasons uh, yogis have, you know, it's, it's good for prostate things. It's good for sex. It's good for all kinds of stuff. Uh, in fact, re I regularly get uh, really turned on after doing yoga because I'm like, you know, I'm in, I'm not, it's like I got a hand down there, but I'm massaging my, my prostate all the time. Every time I do a pose, because I'm, 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 you know, clenching and doing kind of a kegel. And I know that's weird to say, but if you don't want to be wearing diapers in your seventies, you better be fucking doing that. 
If you're not, you will be. Those are exercises you need to do. You need to keep that region strong. And that's the only way to do it. So um, yoga is, the, is, is really the key to longevity. Um, and, and I think uh, happiness. And, and it also provides a lot of dopamine and endorphins. Uh, the reason I like Ashtanga over Tai Chi uh, is because it does get you heart breathing and pumping. And so I get those wonderful endurance endorphins that I've come to love. You don't get that from Tai Chi. I've done Tai Chi before. It's really nice. It's very flowy. It's very meditative. But it doesn't activate dopamine and endorphins the way that exercise does. And Ashtanga is more exercise than Tai Chi. Therefore, you end up getting you know, a healthy dose of, of yoga high at the end. And uh, I've come to be addicted to that feeling. Uh, it's the reason I like cycling so much. So this has been a really long video. In fact, it's probably closer to an hour really long video. Uh, 45 minute video, but uh, today is the day off. So me talking about yoga uh, is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the day off. Uh, we take yoga. We take moon days off. The full moon and half moon, full moon and no, new moon and Saturday. And if you're a woman, you take uh, your period days off. Those are called they call them moon days for women as well. So this is why I'll occasionally be making a talkie talkie video when it once every Saturday. Um, there's not going to be any rhyme or reason to this these videos, but I do. Um, want to want to talk about it and uh they will be sort of thematic um i think next time i've already got other videos that talk about the eight limbs of ashtanga but we will be doing you know 30 minute to, to an hour long videos every saturday uh regarding yoga uh for old people and cyclists like me and i'll be talking about it more from my perspective we will be covering uh, some of the other uh yeah one of the things i like to do on my day off of yoga is to is to practice the other um uh, limbs of Ashtanga, which are which we'll, we'll talk about, but we should we'll probably actually talk about those next Saturday. Uh, what if you only have four limbs? Lol. On that really bad joke, we will end this video. Come join me uh, every day at 9 a.m. except for Moon Days. See you there.